so, you know, if I wanted a cylinder that's this wide, I'm going to make my hockey puck this size. All right, so now for opening, there are different ways to do this, and whatever way works for you is perfectly fine. There's no one right way to do it, just whatever works for you. Um, some people, some people use their thumbs. Some people um, will pull, will open like this, and they'll kind of pinch the clay between um, their hands like this. I like to use my middle finger, so this is going to be my hand position. Um, but I'm going to have my finger, this finger out, and I'll even kind of use this hand to, to help myself push. And it just keeps it nice and stable, because if your finger starts to wobble around as you're opening up the inside, that will dictate how the rest of the pot throwing is going to go. So I'm just kind of going all the way down to, you know, where I think about the right thickness is. If you're my student, you know I don't like to trim. If I don't have to trim, I don't want to have to trim. It's not even the trimming process that I don't like, it's the waiting for it to dry. I just get, I'm too impatient. So I'm not going to leave a lot to trim down here. I'm just gonna get right down to it. So um, the reason that I like this technique also for opening is because when I want a cylinder, I want that um, 90 degree angle down there. So when I take my finger, I go straight over to the right and I keep it straight up and down like this and that makes a nice angle there where the, the bottom of the pot meets the wall. So once I get it open as much as I want it to be, I'm going to take my sponge and I'm going to compress the bottom. Compression is super important because the clay does have a memory and it'll remember while it's drying or firing that it was spinning and those clay particles will try to unspin and that's how you get those one way you get those dreaded S cracks so I'm going to spend a little bit of time I like the sponge for this because it kind of um, distributes the pressure I feel like you don't want to dig, otherwise you end up with those, um, the lumpy bottom with the ridges from your finger. So I like to use the sponge when I compress. Okay, so from this point, um, now I'm going to be ready to do some, to start some pulls, but if you notice, um, by, from opening it, uh, the, the clay kind of started to do this a little bit. It went, it's going a little, it's flared out a little bit and I don't want that. So one of the first things that I do after I open and compress is I'll take my hands like this and pull my elbows into my side and I'll just push from, from right here. I'm just moving my hand up. And if you notice, if it got a little off center, It'll recenter, it'll kind of even it out a little bit for you, and um, it'll give you a little bit of height before you even do an actual pull. So, I mean, right there, got me a good amount of height right off the bat. So, now I'm going to start doing pulls. My hand position, I always try to keep my thumbs touching either like this or like this or like this however I need to <coughs> keeping your hands uh, kind of connected like that helps them move at the same pace as you're coming up so I'm gonna take my finger and kind of I use my middle fingers again for uh, to, to pinch with or to, to do my pulls with because they're the longest and strongest I feel like maybe I don't know um, so I have my finger down and it's kind of rub, running along the inside of the wall there. I'm going to take my sponge and squeeze some water down my hand and it'll run down my finger and along the sides so that I'm hydroplaning and it's not kind of getting dry and pulling. So here goes a f my first pull. We are a little, we've got a bit of a wobble here. 
and that could have been from not centering it totally. Um, or there might be, I, there's some air bubbles in here, I think. That's what I get for not wedging, right? I'm gonna do another pull. I'm pushing a little bit harder at the bottom because there's more clay down there. It's harder to get up off the bottom. One thing the, to remember when you're doing your pulls, to collar it a little bit, <coughs> is that even if you get a wobble, even if you have a bubble, the pot isn't necessarily doomed from that point. So the clay may be kind of wonky and wobbling around on you, but as long as you keep your hands moving evenly, and you don't really go with that wobble, you can get through it and you can still make a good pot even when there are kind of structural issues. <laughs> now one thing to keep an eye on too if you're throwing cylinders is the rim. So it'll start to get kind of flared out and you'll want to, actually I got really thin up here and it's really acting up. So I'm going to even it out a little bit. I'm using just my fingers right now because I'm doing, this is a little more precise so I kind of want to feel what the clay is doing. <coughs> so I'm going to, um, if you have a cheese cutter, these work great. If you have your wire tool, you're just going to wrap it around your fingers like this, like you're going to floss with it. But I like the cheese cutter. <clears throat> you can pick these up at, uh, I, I've picked them up at thrift stores um, in like the silverware area and they're usually like less than a dollar. Some of them have that plastic thing on here. It's like a little plastic roller almost, like a rolling pin and so you, if you can pop that off it'll make it a lot easier to use too. <clears throat> So while I'm doing, when I do my pulls with cylinders and I don't want it to kind of flare out like that, the hand position um, most of the time is with my inside finger slightly above my outside finger. But when I get up to the top, when I get closer to the rim, I do a slight switch so that it kind of brings the, it, I'll kind of bring it back in because it wants to flare out because of the centrifugal force, but if I can keep it from doing that too soon, I'm better off. So now I've gotten too tall to really keep my hands together. So I just have to be really aware of the speed I'm going and make sure my hands are in unison. Okay. And I use a lot of water. I am, I'm a, kind of a sloppy thrower. Um, so I often take my sponge and get down to the bottom and get the water out because I use a lot. Okay, I think that's good on the poles. So what I'm gonna do now will just be like little finishing, little finishing moves um, to clean it up, straighten it up, all of that. Um, and tension and details are really important, I think, in pottery and in the art, really. Um, but with pottery, you know, I will, I like to mirror what's going on in the bottom of my pot sometimes with the rim, um, so they kind of make sense together. Um, and yeah, intention is important because, you know, you don't want to have something, if you do something unintentional and it works, great. You know, but if you don't, and you just kind of, sometimes we just let the clay do whatever it wants, um, and it doesn't always work out. So I always kind of try to pay attention to those details and try to be intentional. So now I'm going to use, I have this giant rib. Um, this one would work fine. It's just that the piece is tall enough that when I do this, I'd get some sort of line here where, where it ends. So I picked up this ginormous rib. And it's a little hard to wield at first, but once you get the hang of it, it's got this, you know, part in the middle where you grab with that hole. So I'm gonna 
they're beveled on the edges here, so I'm not going to go straight in and dig. I'm going to kind of lay it down this way. And I'm going to go from the inside and just push just enough so it goes up against the rib. And that can help you straighten it up and clean up some of those throwing lines if you don't want those on there. Make sure that you're keeping your rib steady. Really important. Make sure your rib is just kind of, there's like a rock there on the side. And I've definitely got some inconsistencies in this clay. Like some chunks that maybe are harder than others. But that's okay. Okay, and then always move off of your clay slowly. Never do, never jump off of it or, or make any swift movements. Because that can, you can jab it and do all kinds of weird stuff to it. So always move off of your clay slowly when you're throwing. Alright, so I'm happy with that shape and I'm happy with the, you know, I cleaned up the outside and smoothed it out. So now I'm going to take, these are going to be my finishing moves here as far as uh, the foot and the rim go. So like I said, I like for them to kind of communicate with each other, make sense together. So I'm going to, I like this tool. Um, I ordered these, there comes in a pack, I ordered on Amazon, but these are really small and really um, fine pointed and stuff and thin. So I like those for little detail things. Um, so my bottoms, because I don't trim usually, um, I do like to give it a little bit of attention though. So I'll kind of cut some of that off the bottom and bevel it. Um, and then I want to mirror this line that I just created. I want to mirror that somewhere in the rim. So I'm going to take, I'm going to use my fingers like this, just around the edge of the rim there. And I'm not pinching, I'm just holding them there so I don't smush the rim too much and knock it off the shape that I have. And I'm just going to use this tool and kind of press down and flatten the top. And so already, because I smushed that clay down a little bit, I've got this line here that'll kind of mirror what's on the bottom. So I'll clean that up a bit, accentuate it a little bit. And then I'm going to run down the side really quick with this wooden tool. And scrape off again some of that extra slip moisture that we put on there when throwing. Ooh, it's kind of marbled. <laughs> All right. And then, last but not least, uh, my finishing sponge. And this is just so we can soften some of these uh, marks that we made in the lines. I'm going to roll it like this and kind of just place it lightly on that edge there and underneath so I can keep it accentuated and then I'll run down the side to clean up smooth it out a little bit and then I'll also roll it and do the same on the bottom so I don't want that to be so harsh And then we have a cylinder. Might use this for flowers, or uh, maybe I can use it to um, distill some alcohol for hand sanitizer. Cut that off there, put it off to the side, let it dry. It's hot today, so I may even be able to. Um, clean these up and finish them up later. Maybe I'll paint on them too. I got some underglazes here at the house. Um, maybe I'll do, uh, I brought home some slip from work to do some stuff with, so maybe I'll play with that. And I'll post the video later. Hope everybody's staying safe and staying inspired.